Section four is on uncertainty in data part two. We are going to cover significant figures. Uh, this is going to be a part of chemistry from now until the, you're done with it. Uh, every time we're doing a calculation, we should always have significant figures in mind, okay? Uh, and I'll, I'll try to remind you as often as I can, uh, but what we learned today in this section uh, is going to be used for the rest of the year. Every time we're doing a calculation, we need to think about sig figs is what you'll hear me call them. Or if you see me write down SF or SFs, uh, that's standing for significant figures. This is going to be a, a very important uh, lesson for the rest of your time in chemistry. So how do scientists actually indicate the precision of their data? Well, there are varying degrees in precision to which data is recorded. So if you think about it, like your iPads, uh, at the top of them, it might say the time to the nearest minute. Um, so that's the, the, the closest you can get, you know, across the top of your iPad. Uh, along the bottom... Uh, you might use the stopwatch, which can go out to the hundredth of a second, okay? Uh, those, those times have more precision to them, okay? The, the stopwatch has more precision to it. It's got more decimal points in the number, right? So the question is, like, can you get more precise or how much more? Uh, you know, how good is a scale? Can it measure to the tenth of a gram? Can it measure to the hundredth of a gram? Can it measure to the ten thousandth of a gram? Okay, uh, that's what this section is on, okay? Significant figures is how precise is this number, right? How well do we know this number for sure? So precision is indicated by the number of digits reported in the data. Uh, if you wrote down 3.52 grams, that means you, you're sure out to this place of that number. If you only wrote 3.5, well, that means you don't necessarily know what digit comes after that, okay? And if you only wrote 3, then you really don't know what numbers come after it, okay? All you know is the value of that first number, okay? This has more precision than this one, which has more precision than this one. The number of digits you write down are called significant figures, okay? This has more significant figures than this number. This number has more significant figures than this one. The more numbers you write down, the more you're indicating that this data is this certain, Okay, we, we know it out to this point. Okay, that's we're trying to get into precision of data here. The more numbers you write down, the more you're sure of it. So if you write down too many numbers, okay, on a chemistry problem on things that we're not sure of, then it'll be marked incorrect or you'll lose some uh, some point value for not writing down the correct number of digits. So we're going to be trying to round things with the correct number of significant figures. So if I'm taking a measurement, what's it actually doing? Well. A measurement with chemistry and all science is going to include all of the known digits, the ones we're certain of, plus one estimated digit. So take a look at this, uh, this little meter stick down here, okay, this ruler. Uh, consider this figure. How many significant figures are in the measurement of this particular uh, pole here, all right, or rod or whatever it might be, wire? Uh, so we know for sure that it goes past the four centimeter mark. We know for sure it goes past the five centimeter mark. We know for sure that it does not go past the six centimeter mark. So we know that the very first value for this must be a five, okay? Then after that, we look at the tenths values. Uh, it definitely goes past 5.1. It definitely goes past 5.2. It definitely does not go past 5.3. So the second number, okay, should be a two. And then after that, Right, we don't have an exact value in here. We don't have any markings to try to help us determine exactly what the next value will be. So we know the five is correct, we know the two is correct, and we include all the digits we know plus one estimated digit. This last one is the one we're not sure about, okay? Uh, and this picture here has estimated it to be a three, okay? So the five and the two in this number 5.23 centimeters. The five and the two are known digits because we are certain that this wire goes past this point. Uh, the three is estimated. We know it falls somewhere between here. It's kind of closer to the marker on the left than it is the one on the right. So we'll just go with a three, okay? So when you're taking data with like a, a ruler, that's how you would write this down. If you're taking data with like a graduated cylinder, which you'll see later on, that's how you would write this down. Okay, uh, scales that you weigh stuff out on already do this for you. Okay, so the last digit that the scale is giving you is an estimated, okay, value. So if you're weighing something out on a scale, the last one's estimated. So just because your values are precise does not necessarily make them accurate. Right? We talked about the difference between accuracy and precision in the last video. Your data may, might not represent the actual values. So that penny example from the end of the last video, 
let's say I had all of you in class come up and weigh that penny on the same balance, and every single time, you know, the penny from 2010 weighs 2.47 grams, right? Uh, and every time that's what you get. Well, that's a precise value, uh, but it's not accurate. It should be 2.5 grams, right? Uh, that does not mean it's accurate, okay? Uh, so what we're going here with precision is how many numbers we're writing down in our data. Okay, so before you do anything else, I would screenshot this page. Uh, here are the rules for significant figures. These are extremely, extremely important. I would screenshot it or write it down. Make sure you know these. Uh, they've got examples over here on the right, and I'm going to do several examples for you, and then you're going to show me that you actually know how to do this on your own as well. Okay, uh, so when we're writing down data, okay, data points with numbers, we need to make sure we write down the right number of significant figures, and we also need to know how many significant figures are in a number that you are reading, okay, so that you know when you're reading scientific data, uh, how certain are these scientists of their numbers. So, rule number one, all non-zero numbers are always significant. So if you're writing down a number, okay, anything that's non-zero, so we're talking about one, two, three, right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, those are all non-zero. The only number that's not going to fall under this is a zero, okay? So zeros are, are potentially insignificant, all right? Uh, so 72.3. The 7 is significant, the 2 is significant, the 3 is significant. You would say this number has three significant figures. The 7 counts, the 2 counts, and the 3 counts. All right. Rule number 2, all final zeros to the right of a decimal are significant. So now we're getting rules about zeros. So rule number 1 tells us everything but zeros counts. Rule 2 through 4 here, uh, and a little bit into 5, give us a little bit more detail about what to do with zeros. So rule two says all final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. So let's look over here at this example, 6.20. The six and the two count because of rule one, okay? They're non-zero numbers. They're, they're not zero. Uh, this zero here, it is a final zero. It ends the number, and it's to the right of a decimal. So here's my decimal point. Here's the zero. So this one, according to rule two, is going to count. So in this instance, the six counts, the two counts, and the zero counts. We'll see instances of when zeros don't count here in just a moment. Uh, 6.20. So all three numbers here are significant. We'd say this has three significant figures. Rule three, any zero between significant figures is significant. Okay, so here we've got a six, 60.5. The six counts, the five counts. I have this zero in the middle between two values that are significant. So this zero is significant. So all three numbers in that are significant figures. Uh, rule four, so which ones don't count? Placeholder zeros. Uh, so these are zeros that are basically just telling you how big or small a number is. So we've got a couple of examples over here. Uh, 0.0253, so we have a two, the five, and the three that count as being significant because they're not zero. And then what about these ones? Uh, well, according to rule two, all final zeros to the right of the decimal all are significant. Well, here, this zero does not end the number. It is not a final zero. It's between the decimal and the first non-zero value. So this does not count. And the same thing with this zero out here, okay? It's not after a decimal. It's also not between significant figures. So these first two zeros are insignificant, all right? So 0 0.0253 has only three significant figures. Okay, same thing over here, 4,320 grams. The four, the three, and the two count. Then if you look at the rest of these things up here, all final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. There is no decimal point, so rule two doesn't apply in 4,320, written like this. Any zero between significant figures is significant. That zero is not between significant figures, so it does not count. So it's just placeholding, okay? Uh, and then rule five, counting numbers are and defined constants have an infinite number of significant figures. So when we're talking about things that are set values or exact values, uh, 60 seconds is one minute. There's no like uncertainty in that because we created these values, okay? Uh, you know, one kilogram is 1,000 grams exactly. There's no uncertainty in these numbers, all right? Uh, but by writing these in here, it says that each of these numbers has three significant figures, and those are the ones that I am sure are correct. Okay, so let's look at here at a couple of examples. 421,000 seconds, okay? We don't need to really worry about the unit here. But what I like to do just to start is put dots underneath numbers until we're comfortable counting these. So 4,000, 421,000. 
The four counts because it's non-zero. The two counts because it's non-zero. The one counts because it's non-zero. Now we need to look at these three. Uh, all final zeros to the right of the decimal. There is no decimal. Rule two can't apply. Rule three, zero is between significant figures. These zeros are not between significant values. They would need one over here, so that's not going to be the case. Uh, so these are simply placeholders. So this one only has three significant figures. Okay. 0 0.0421. Well, once again, the four, the two, and the one count automatically. Then we look at the rest of this. All final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. Yes, this zero is to the right of the decimal, but it is not a final or terminal zero. It does not end the number, so that does not count. Okay. I don't have any zeros between significant figures, and so that means that these first two are just placeholding, so this one also only has three significant figures. Okay, so we're going to keep doing some examples down below here. The rules for doing this are up top, so you have easy access to looking at them. Uh, what about this one? So 421,000.0. Okay, so this four counts, that two counts, that one counts, based on rule number one. Rule two, all final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. I have a zero that's after the decimal and ends my number. So that one's also going to count now. Well, let's look at rule three. Any zero between significant figures is significant. Here I have three of them between this one and this zero. So all three of these count, okay? So every number in this uh, 421,000.0 is significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There would be seven significant figures in that number. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, once again, the four, the two, and the one. Hopefully you're picking up on this automatically count. All right, based on rule two, all final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. Okay, so this zero here is to the right of the decimal and ends my number. So this one is going to count. All right, this one is to the right of the decimal but does not end the number, so it does not count. So these first two are just placeholding. So 0 0.04210 has four significant figures. Uh, we haven't seen this yet, but if we get something written in scientific notation, life is actually really easy for counting significant figures. All you have to do is just count how many digits are in the coefficient. So if I have 4.21 times 10 to the fifth, okay, the four, the two, and the one count, so that's just three significant figures, okay? 4.210, all I gotta do is count how many digits are in the coefficient. One, two, three, four. All right, this one has four significant figures. Okay, so if you get numbers in scientific notation and they're asking about sig figs, all you got to do is count how many are in the coefficient. Super easy. Okay, so something we have to be careful with, uh, and this is why I wrote that on the last slide. If I write out that 4.210 times 10 to the fifth, I told you when we counted it out uh, all you, with scientific notation, all you got to do is count the number of digits in the coefficient. So we said that this was four significant figures. The problem is that if you take this number and then write it down in standard notation, uh, you're going to see what happens here and why this is a problem. Um, if, I, if I change this from scientific notation to just standard notation, uh, what I get here, okay, 421,000, let's look at what looks significant. The four counts, the two counts, the one counts, and then suddenly these three don't. There's no decimal point, uh, right? So it just looks like all of a sudden, if I write this out in standard notation, it's got three significant figures. So the question is, Right? How do I write? How do I write 421,000 with four significant figures? Okay. Uh, so what we want to do? There's there's two ways to do this. One is to write it back in scientific notation. That will, will count. Uh, and then the second option. All right. How do I write this with? Three significant, sorry, four significant figures. Uh, well, let me change this zero to make it a little bit more legible. Um, your first thought might be, well, what if I wrote a decimal point in here and I wrote like point zero? Okay, well, if I do that, now the four, the two, the one, the counts, this final zero counts, and so does everything in the middle here. So that would have seven, right? Okay, so we don't want that. If I write 421,000, okay, uh, with a decimal, if you see this, like, like this with a decimal point here, what that means is that this zero counts, and if that zero counts, then both of those do, so that would be six significant figures. 
so what you will see done, if you've got these kind of large numbers like this with a bunch of zeros, but I need to write it with one of these zeros being significant, meaning that we know it's correct, what I will do, okay, is I will actually take and write a line over the zero that I know is significant. This would have four significant figures, okay? Uh, if I wrote a number like this, 421,000, and then I put a line over the second zero, well, this four, two, and one count, that zero counts, and now that zero counts, so this one would have five, right? So this one before, just making sure we know which ones are significant, those would be the ones significant there. Okay, so we can write this line over a zero that would otherwise be insignificant. Okay, so you don't see it too often, but if you see a line written over a zero, that means that zero counts. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, here are five of these for you to try on your own. Let's see how you do. So why are significant figures important? They're important because when we go to do calculations, we need to know where to round off. We don't want to write down too many numbers and assert more precision than is actually correct. Okay, so when performing calculations, calculators don't know when to round off. All right, uh, so how do scientists know when to round off? This, this is the method, okay? So we use scientific notation, we use significant figures to make these calculations easier to do. Uh, so, for instance here, if we're calculating, say, density, and by the way, this equation here, I would make sure that that's in my notes, write it down, screenshot it, whatever. Okay, density is mass divided by volume, all right? Uh, so let's say that, you know, I'm calculating density in a lab, and I go and I weigh something on a scale, and it weighs 22.44 grams, all right? I know there are four significant figures there, and the volume is... 14.2 milliliters. Okay, I measure that using a graduated cylinder. We'll see what those look like later on. Uh, so I've got all this, and I take these two numbers and I plug them into my calculation. 22.44 divided by 14.2. The calculator spits back to you 1.5802817, and my unit is grams over milliliters, since I have grams divided by milliliters, so grams over milliliters. Uh, but, but do you know that that's the correct density out to that far? Are you that sure far, that with that much precision? The answer is no, or you don't know it after a while here. These final digits are just total guesses. Okay, we only wanna report what we know can possibly be correct. So how do we accurately report this? How many significant figures do we write down? Uh, there's a correct way for rounding this, and that's what we're going to learn. Okay, so there's some point here where we will round off to give us the correct number of digits to write down. And when you're performing calculations this year, you need to follow these rules. If you write down too few numbers, you'll lose some points. If you write down too many numbers, you'll lose some points. You need to write down the correct number of digits. Okay, so that's why this is very important. So we consider those three numbers that were in that calculation, 22.44, 14.2, 1.5802817. 1 How many significant figures are in each of them? Well, uh, this one has four, right? No zeros in any of these numbers, so all these are going to count, one, two, three, four. It's got four significant figures. Volume has three, 14.2. Again, no zeros there, so every one of those digits is significant. Does it make sense to write down a density with eight significant figures? We, we know that that can't possibly be accurate, so there's some limitation here. The question is, is the 5 the last correct number? Is the 8 the last correct number? Is the 0, the 2? At, at some, what point do we actually round off? And here are the rules. Now, before we get into the calculation rules, we're going to talk about just general rounding rules. All right? So in all of these examples here, okay, uh, these are all being rounded to all being rounded to three significant figures, okay? So this, your answer may be a different number here. It's not always three significant figures. Uh, but let's say, you know, your calculation gives you 2.532, uh, and you want to round it to three significant figures. So what you do is you go find the uh, third number, third significant figure in the number. So the first one here is the two, the second one is the five, the third one is the three. So that three is going to be the one that we're looking at. And then we look at the digit that comes after it. Okay, so rule one applies here. If the digit to the right of the last significant figure is less than five, do not change the last value. So this three is going to stay the same. 2.532 to three significant figures becomes 2.53. Okay, now that's just a, your you know, general rounding rules. Here we're just, instead of saying rounding to the hundredth place, we're saying round to three significant figures. Okay, 
Uh, same thing here. We want to round 2.536 to three significant figures. So I look at the third significant figure, which is the three. It's followed by a six. Okay, so if the number is greater than five, round the last digit up. Okay, the, the significant figure up. So the three there would round up to a four, and I'd get 2.54. I think most of you guys would be comfortable with those rounding rules. All right. Uh, so we're doing it again, 2.5351, and we want to round it to three significant figures. Three is the last significant figure. What follows it is a five. Okay, so now rules one and two don't apply. Uh, if the digit to the right of the last significant figure are a five followed by non-zero digits, so something not zeros, so five, two, one, six, five, three, one, two, whatever it might be, uh, round up the last significant figure. So if this is 2.5351, then we should round that three up to a four, okay? Uh, rule four, it doesn't happen very often. It's extremely rare that this occurs. It can happen, though. This is sometimes called the even-odd rule uh, because of how it works. It just averages the numbers over time of how our data would work. So if I get, say, 2.5350 and I want to round it to three significant figures, well, I look at the three, it's followed by a five, and then the only thing after is a, a zero or nothing, right? Okay, which is what the rules are saying over here. Uh, it's followed by a zero, which means it's exactly in the middle. Well, the rule then is that if this is an odd number, it rounds up. If this is an even number, it stays the same. Okay, so 2.5350, because the three is odd and there's nothing after this five except zeros or nothing, uh, this three is going to round up. And then the other example here, 2.5250, the two is the last one we're looking at. It's followed by a five and nothing but zeros after that. So since this is an even number, it stays the same. Uh, doesn't happen very often, just something that we should consider, okay? Uh, just know of its existence. So let's practice doing a couple of these roundings here. Uh, consider 3.515014, okay? Uh, round to five significant figures. So I find the first one, the first significant figure is right here, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, so this is the one that we're looking at. Rounding it to five significant figures, well, what follows the zero is a one, so rule one is going to apply here. So rounding the number to five significant figures, 3.5150 would be the correct answer. And then if I'm rounding it to three significant figures, all right, so then it would go one, two, three. So I'm looking at this one. The one is followed by a five, okay? And there's numbers greater than just zeros here. There's numbers greater than zeros. So this is going to make rule three apply. Okay, so we're gonna end up rounding this up. So this would round to 3.52, okay? All right, I want you to try rounding 27.20501 to three significant figures, four significant figures, and two significant figures. See how you do. Okay, so now that we're done with the rounding rules, getting back to that question we asked when we were doing the equation for density, right? How do we know how many digits to write down when we're doing a calculation? So here are your calculation rules, okay? Calculation rules, all right? There's a rule for addition and subtraction, and then there's a rule for multiplication and division, all right? Uh, so we'll look at the addition subtraction rule first, and then we'll do the multiplication division. When you add or subtract measurements, the answer must have the same number of digits to the right of the decimal as the original value having the fewest numbers, uh, number of digits to the right of the decimal. Okay, that's a lot, of, uh, a lot of words that might be very confusing. So let's say we want to add up these volumes, okay? I think the best way to do this is just show you how to do it. Uh, we have 1.24 milliliters, we have 12.4 milliliters, and we have 124 milliliters, right? So we're going to line these up based on their place values. We got, what, a 4, a 6, uh, let's see, that's a 7, a 3, and a 1. Okay, so what this is saying here is that your final answer cannot go to the right any further than the one that goes the least far to the right. Okay, this one goes out to the hundreds place, this one goes out to the tens place, this one goes to the ones place, meaning my final answer here cannot go further then the ones place, all right? So what I like to do is I find the one that's shortest, the one that goes the least far to the right, okay? Uh, and then I will just draw a line down, okay? Down my problem, and know that this is where I round off, this seven, okay? The seven is followed by a six, meaning the seven is gonna round up. So the correct answer here would be 
uh, 138 milliliters. Okay, I round off at the ones place because it's the one that goes the least far to the right. This rule is only good for addition and subtraction. Okay, so whatever you're doing, addition or subtraction, line them up vertically like this. Okay, and then whichever one goes the least far to the right is as far to the right as you can go in your answer. Now, don't get this confused with the multiplication and division rule, which is coming up next. Okay, there are two separate rules. All right, so I'm going to let you guys try these two examples uh, on your own, and we'll see how you do with your answer. Okay, so remember, line them up vertically, up and down. Whichever one goes the least far to the right is as far to the right as you can go in your answer. Okay, so now for the rules for multiplication and division. When you multiply or divide numbers, your answer must have the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. Again, a lot of words and a little confusing when you're just trying to read it. Uh, so let's do like an example density calculation, just like we did you know, in the example before. Grams divided by milliliters, right? Mass divided by volume. So let's say we're doing the calculation, it's 34.65 grams and 23.5 milliliters, 34.65 divided by 23.5, your calculator spits back 1.474468098, and you know it would be grams per milliliter, right? Grams divided by milliliters. Uh, so what this is saying is you need to find the least number of significant figures in your setup, okay, because that's going to dictate how many can be in your answer. Uh, 34.65 grams. Hopefully you're getting quick enough at this now that you can just look at it and tell that's got four significant figures. 23.5 milliliters has three significant figures. So the one that has the fewest in my setup is this bottom number because it only has three, right? So three significant figures is the least number in the problem, which means my answer then can only have three. So what I need to do is come up here, one, two, three, all right, so we're looking at this 7. 7 is followed by a 4, which means the 7 is going to stay the same. So the correct way to write this down on a quiz or test or homework assignment is 1.47 grams per milliliter. Your answer should have three significant figures. That's how you round it, okay? All right, one last page here. I'm going to show you very carefully about what happens here in this top one with rounding because there can be some pretty easy mistakes being made. And then I want you to do this one on your own and write down your answer, okay? So this first one, uh, let's say I'm finding the volume of something, okay? So I'm taking length times width times height is really what I'm doing here. Whoops, let's change this back to color you can see. So length times width times height, right? Hopefully a formula you're, you've seen at some point in your life before this. Measured in distance, centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters. So I end up with cubic centimeters, since centimeters times centimeters times centimeters would give me that. Uh, so 12.4 times 13.57 times 14, okay? This one has, 12.4 has three significant figures, 13.57 has four, and 14 has two. The one that has the fewest number in the problem is two, okay? Uh, so that means my final answer over here can only have two significant figures in it. And this is actually a good example because it's a very common made mistake. Uh, guys get a number like this, and they go, okay, the first number is significant as a two, the second one is a three, it's followed by a five, so the three rounds up, and a lot of guys will just write 24, okay? Uh, that is incorrect. Do not write just 24, okay? Uh, because you, this is 2,355 something. You're rounding it all the way down to 24, you divided it by, what, 100? Uh, I don't know how you managed to do that. Uh, that seems... <laughs> like we're missing something here. So what ends up happening is with these numbers, when this three rounds up to a four, all right, uh, so we get two, four, uh, the rest of this gets replaced with zeros because I can only write two significant figures in an answer. So a lot of guys, would, again, would just write 24 because that's two significant figures. But it's got to be a big enough number, okay? So what I need to write is 2,400 Okay, written like that. Basically, the rest of this just drops off and gets replaced with zeros because this is not significant and this is not significant, but these two are. So I still wind up with two significant figures and it's the correct magnitude of size. Okay, it's in the thousands, which it should be, not you know the, the tens place here. Okay, I want you to try this last one on your own. Remember, pay attention to significant figures. It's all multiplication or division, so you only have to round off one time at the end. Okay, we'll see how you do on that.